we will begin this afternoon's side event. I want to welcome you all to this event and thank you for taking time out of your busy uh, ECOSOC meetings and other agenda to come and talk with us today about evaluation. This side event is entitled Empowering Countries Through Evaluation, the Global Movement Towards the 2015 International Year of Evaluation. My name is Deborah Rugg and I'll be moderating this session and providing some background and context on what the issues in evaluation are today. I'm the chair of the UN Evaluation Group and also the Inspection and Evaluation Division Director in OIOS here in the Secretariat in New York. UNEG is a unique group in the UN. It's a voluntary professional network of all of the evaluation directors and heads in all of the agencies across the UN. So that's the funds and programs, the secretariat, the specialized agencies, etc. All of their evaluation heads come together and form this professional voluntary network called UNEG, or the evaluation group. Our focus is on supporting independent, credible, and useful evaluations. And we do this with an eye towards improving the utilization of evaluation, uh, not only in the UN offices, but at the country level as well, so that better decisions and better results can be uh, obtained for programs and people in the countries that you uh, are all familiar with. Um, we support decision making, we do advocacy for the evaluation function and profession. The profession itself is maturing and we are trying to see that evaluation can play a much more effective and useful role in program operations, decision making and accountability. Um, this session today then, as our flyer uh, had uh, announced for you, will be about discussing evaluation to empower countries to take greater ownership in their <coughs> development, uh, development agenda by building evaluation capacity at the country level and, ena and an enabling environment to ensure that evidence-based decisions are being made. Evaluation can explain what works and what doesn't work and how to do things better and it answers three key questions, namely, are we doing the right things, are we doing them right, and are we doing them on a scale that's going to be making a difference? The answers to these questions lead us down an impact pathway towards program learning and accountability. But we're hearing so much these days about the MDGs and the post-2015 agenda and the call, the increasingly loud call for accountability. And this is being uh, coming out of, I think, a frustration of needing to know more about what is really working at the country level and that we didn't really do enough evaluation, uh, especially evaluation owned and led and used by countries during the MDG phase. And we'd like to correct that in the post-2015 agenda. So building accountability frameworks and a data revolution, what does that all mean? How are we really going to get there? Evaluators and evaluation function can play a key role. Our interests are ensuring that we get information about what is working early on, that we don't wait another 10 years, that we don't wait to come together until 2025 and assess how well have we done in the post-2015 agenda. We believe that there needs to be an evaluation portfolio framework and approach now so that we get intermediate information, strategic information, <coughs> real-time answers about what is starting to work in 2018 and 2020. 2022, as well as 25, 2025. And we really want to see, in, from the evaluation perspective, that countries are in the driver's seat on knowing what isn't, isn't working and being able to own, manage evaluations and use those results for better programming and policy making so that better results in this next era, post-2015, will be able to be achieved. So to get there from here, from an evaluator's perspective, that includes accountability, program learning and results for people, at the country level, we are going to need to go beyond simply monitoring statistical indicators, we, which only reflect what has happened in the past. We need more real-time information and a proactive vision and plan. Thus, we need country-level impact pathways. We need comprehensive evaluation frameworks, plans, and systems. We need special targeted evaluation studies that answer the questions you need to know at the country level to redesign, redirect, and make mid-course corrections on programs in real time. 
and we need genuine national evaluation capacity to do that. As we all know in development, sustainability is not possible without ownership, and ownership is not possible without capacity. And that is ex very true in evaluation as well. Sustainable evaluation systems is not <coughs> going to be possible without country ownership of evaluation. And that is not going to be possible without genuine capacity to do it, manage it, lead it, and use it. So these, these efforts we feel are essential to uh, embrace uh, immediately as we begin 2014-2015 uh, so that by the years following this next year we will already be underway with a plan and, and action strengthening evaluation at the country level. Now these may be idealistic and ambitious goals, but that is what we are about in the UN and evaluators are, are no different. We are pleased to tell you, however, that it's already begun. So it's exciting to see a growing groundswell for evaluation, uh, recognizing the role that evaluation plays in the uh, decision making and the critical role it can play in the future, advancing the development agenda and getting even better results this next, uh, in this next era. This is going to be especially increasingly important evaluation for the new global south and the new global north, as evaluation becomes critical in managing the resources coming in, implementing these programs and finding out if we're doing the right things again, doing them right and doing them on a scale that's actually making a difference. Thus, an innovative and catalytic partnership has taken hold and has begun to spread worldwide. This evaluation partnership, known as Eval Partners, and there is actually a flyers about this in the back of the room that gets you more information. Uh, this partnership has grown from just 15 countries seven years ago to 149 members today, and it is still growing. And it is a group of voluntary professional evaluation associations now in, in over 140 countries around the world, uh, UN agencies, foundations, academia, and civil society, and increasingly the voice of the people who are demanding evaluation so that programs are meeting their needs and achieving a real results. We're calling for, and uh, this past year, the Eval Partners has joined forces with the UN Evaluation Group to declare 2015 as the International Year of Evaluation. 2015 is obviously a landmark year for, for many, for everyone, and it is for evaluation as well. What it means to us is this will be a strategic year for a sea change, where we will move beyond rhetoric to actual seeing the materializing of catalytic actions to improve evaluation at the country level. But we can't do that alone, and the UN has a strong role to play if we can step up to the plate, visualize what we want, and how we're going to get there. So I hope this gives a little bit of background to the context we're about today, um, inspires you in your own reflections on what you think we need and, and how we as, as UN member states and agencies can work together to advance this issue and see that we are uh, further along when we come back together in our next time, our, our next meetings. So I would like to introduce then the other members of the panel today that will be joining me and sharing some of their reflections on the issue of evaluation, what do we need, what is it, and where we're going, um, from their very different perspectives. Uh, first, I would like to say that um, his, uh, his um, Mr. Roble Ohai, uh, the permanent representative of the Republic of Djibouti, was unable to make it today. He had definitely wanted to be here, but had competing commitments at the last minute, so sends his regrets. Um, however, we do have on our panel representative from the government of Mexico, Ms. Graciela Terrell, who is a representative of Carnival. Carnival is the National Council for the Evaluation of Social Development Policy and Evaluation in, in Mexico City, in Mexico. Welcome, Graciela. We also have Ms. Cheryl Gray, who's the Director of the Office of Evaluation and Oversight at the Inter-American Development Bank in Washington, D.C., with also many years of development experience and uh, evaluation and other types of oversight uh, functions. And Mr. Jan Swandell, the Assistant Administrator <coughs> and Director of the Bureau of Management at UNDP here in New York. They have very different experiences and, and roles and perspectives, but we felt it good that, that that was good and we wanted this diversity of perspective as we embrace what are we going to do in evaluation and how are we going to provide more uh, strength to country ownability, owning of uh, accountability and evaluations. So with that uh, opening, uh, we'll turn to our speakers and then when we're done with their reflections and, and remarks, we'll turn to you for hopefully an open, lively dialogue of what this means and, and what we can do.